Good evening and welcome to the Long Meadow Select Board meeting for January 7, 2019. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight our agenda includes setting a uh, date for our town elections in June and also a discussion with our moderator about the upcoming special town meeting. That's January 17th, a Thursday night. Uh, we're also going to talk, talk a little bit about uh, our Dwight Road uh, tax project, uh, the DIF project, we call it, uh, and uh, also a review of our uh, options on based on the re recommendations of the Charter Review Committee. So uh, with that, I'm just going to ask if there are any announcements at all other than the fact that there is a special town meeting Thursday, January 17th, 7 p.m. in Long Middle High School. Uh, encourage everybody to, to try to attend. Anybody, Stephen, do you have any uh, Yeah, just a few, Mark. Um, our Solarize program will be having another event. Um, I think it's Wednesday night at Greenwood at, um, pardon me, uh, 7.30. I'm sorry, it's at the library. So Solarize, Springfield Lawn Middle, have, a, I think, another Meet the Installer event at 7.30 at the library. Um, it's a great program. We've gotten great um, response so far. So I hope people will uh, go and learn more about how to get uh, discounted solar uh, panels through a vendor that has been fully vetted um, through a uh, knowledgeable panel of... Um, residents and, and uh, area experts. Uh, we're also, um, I think we all know it's prime pothole season. Um, so if you have potholes on your street, uh, please either call the DPW or better yet, use the YourGov app because you can take a picture of it and send it in. It'll geocode the location and let us know where there are potholes to be fixed. Uh, I've said this a few times in the past, but because we've made investments and in upgrades in our equipment for repairing potholes, we now fill them with actual hot mix, not cold patch which comes out you know a day later so uh, I did see evidence that they were out filling potholes today um, so if you have some like I said the Yergov app is the best way to go and obviously we're gonna get some inclement weather um, overnight uh, not expected to be much accumulation but it will be um, you know potentially pretty potentially icy so uh, just take it easy out there any, any other comments or announcements they have asked for any uh, Residents' comments. If anybody resident has a residence comment you'd like to come forward, please do so at this time. Just ask that you take a seat. Please state your name and, and address, and ask that you hold your comments down to a couple of minutes. Um, my name is Deborah Levy, um, 162 William Street. Good evening. I appreciate this opportunity to add my voice to the others raised in concern around the plans for a compressor metering station on the grounds of the Longmeadow Country Club. I still have vivid memories as a child growing up during the Cold War of hiding under our desks at school waiting for the piercing sound of the air raid warnings to cease. The fear we felt came from an unknown foe far away but to us, that fear was real and visceral. More recently, unbalanced people with guns have brought the same fear to classrooms all over the country. And now, tragically, I fear that the Long Meadows school children, specifically the Wolf Swamp, Elementary, Wolf Swamp Road Elementary students, may face another source of danger, one they cannot see or smell but one that is as deadly as any we can imagine. That danger comes from the proposed gas pipeline metering station, which will be located less than a quarter mile from Wolf Swamp School. These stations release raw methane as the gas is transferred from Tennessee pipelines 160 PSI to the Columbia gas pipelines 40 PSI at the Long Meadow City Gate metering station. In this process, raw methane is released. Though odorless and colorless, natural gas releases 
carcinogens, heavy metals, and particulates such as nitrous oxide that result in increased level of asthma and COPD. We know that young <coughs> children's bodies are particularly sensitive to the effects of neurotoxins and respiratory irritants. Can we actually afford to add these dangerous pollutants to the air in the town and particularly in high concentrations near an elementary school? Adults have the capacity to understand complex issues such as those raised by the prospect of a metering station in town. They have the power to vote, to approve, or deny such structures, not that these are always followed. And these decisions are based on a multitude of factors. But five and eight-year-olds get up in the morning, brush their teeth, get dressed, eat their breakfast, and happily go to school to learn to play and develop the decision-making skills they will need as adults. They do not have the power to make their surroundings safe by limiting harmful byproducts released into the air they breathe. That is our responsibility as their parents, neighbors, and teachers. How do we protect the little ones who cannot advocate for themselves. We do this by educating ourselves, asking the hard questions, and not allowing secrecy to defeat us in the most important task we will ever have, to protect our children until they can advocate for themselves. If we do not do this, who will? Thank you, Ms. Levy. Does anybody else have any other comments? No? Hearing none, I'm going to move on. Our next order of business is uh, any select board comments? No? Town manager's report. Stephen. Sure, and I'm just realizing that that meet the installer event is at 7. Should Too late. We've already gone past that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that meet the installer event is at 7. I um, want to just correct that. Um, so you have the report in front of you. Uh, I think the big news is the um, all the approvals we've needed to get our um, DPW project back online uh, have been received. Uh, work has started on the road. We had to uh, spend a little extra money to repair the road. Um, we're going to take a different route than we first expected to, largely because, uh, fortunately, uh, Amtrak is now finally um, engaged in repairs on the t and upgrades at the Tina Lane crossing, which is something we've obviously sought for a long time. Naturally, it happens at the same time. We have this issue at the DPW we're trying to resolve, but sometimes that's just the way things go. Both both things are very positive for the town, and just like I said, the timing of it is a little um, a little tough. But uh, we're moving again, and uh, they will start um, removing soils from the DPW uh, from the new location on Dwight Road down to the landfill. Uh, we expect that to take 30 to 60 days, depending on weather and some other factors. Um, but like I said, uh, that's gr uh, good movement again. Um, Westcom, I think, will be picking up a lot of momentum on that initiative as well. We were kind of holding off on making hires until uh, the district was accepted into Hamden County Retirement. What's important about that is many of the people that are really um, kind of the best and brightest in, in public safety for dispatching are already members of a state or other Massachusetts county system. And to be able to attract great employees, we want to be able to offer them commensurate uh, pension benefits. So uh, that has been approved by the legislature. I believe I, I believe it's still away in the governor's signature. I have not received it. He signed it, but that's a big milestone. When that gets done, we will be we will start making some hires. Uh, and our technology consultant completed their report and has reviewed our um, plans for technology and radios. And we think over the next few weeks we'll be able to start um, <coughs> making uh, equipment purchases that are funded by our state grant um, to start building out the, the center uh, up in Chicopee. Um, and speaking of grants, the fire department received a nice grant. It's one we, we get um, each year. Uh, but I think they've in, uh, definitely enhanced um, both the amount and what we do with it. It's the SAFE grant um, for seniors and the SAFE um, grant for schools. Uh, Chief Dearborn works closely with the school district and our adult center to, prom to promote programs for fire safety. Uh, you can see the list of um, some of the programs they've done. 
and then um, we received a, a, a grant for um, health care for Kai, our K-9 unit, uh, for the police department. That's about it. Right, anybody have any questions? Mark Marie. I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. The, uh, the government shutdown, the federal government, is that going to affect any funding for us in the near future? Anything that's coming through? Not that I've seen so far. I, I think what will end up happening is something we've been waiting for, we'll find out, is delayed months because of the shutdown that we weren't aware of. But okay. nothing has come to my attention yet. Okay. And the plastic bag bylaw, mm -hmm. any word from the Attorney General? No, office? actually, I asked Kathy this morning. They have 90 days, and I think generally they take most of that. So 90 days, we're talking February. probably February, end of February sometime? Yeah. Okay. Kathy has the date kind of circled in her calendar. Mm hmm <coughs> Okay. And um, the other question I had is, uh, let's see, the William Street, the Williams Road bump. Mm -hmm. uh, I was heading towards our special meeting, and of course I went flying over it, and I realized why I went flying over it. It was raining and it was dark, and there was nothing reflective to remind me that that's where it was. And then I noticed the, uh, what do you call it, the speed indicators still say 35 miles an hour, literally just like 10 feet before the bump. Mm -hmm. So it, minimally, I think we should relook at that because, um, to maybe say it's no longer 35 miles an hour, we got to cover those, uh, or else something reflective at night, especially when we're starting to probably get into some bad weather. Okay, I mean we do have we did add the reflective kind of bright green signage that says reduce speed. Um, no, I mean on the actual right. road, there should be something approaching it, or at least we have it on. I think there's huge bike bars that are up in the one at the green just could you relook at it for a night issue yeah. now i personally you'd say well you should know better marie because you've been over it numerous times but we know a lot of people are also not it's not their it is their first time going over it and at dark and at night uh i the sign for 35 miles an hour hit me more than the slow down one so please reconsider what we're doing there by the end of the week we should have some um, of the speed radar signs that do the stroke flashing when you're going too fast and we'll probably have them set for you know 20 miles an hour and mm -hmm. they'll be they should be mounted right to the, the the posts that have the pedestrian lights so we'll remove the 35 mile an hour uh, yeah I mean it is posting. 35 um, once you get past it, it's 35 going the other direction no it's 35 going both ways I going saw. into the shops it's right after you right after you pass it's 30 mm -hmm. um, but I think we're going to drag the 30 to this side of the mm. crosswalk. Well, where I got hit from it was coming from the shops, going around, heading down towards the police station. Mm. It said 35 miles an hour, and then the next yeah. thing I knew I was <laughs> going. Okay. Um, and then let's see, my other question was, update on the Bliss Park deed issue. You were gonna find out on what the steps we needed to do to mark the deed and what the cost would be. I thought that the town council came and the board said to record the um, certified copy of the order of taking was the approach that the board decided on. I think the council was working on making sure that all of the deeds that he had done research on a few years ago were referenced, and I think he's doing that. It, to be honest with you, we've been a little preoccupied with other things, um, but I also know that um, we are potentially working on getting a price for survey as well um, mm -hmm. for Bliss Park. So you're saying the attorney's already beginning the marking of all the deeds? That no, he had to go back to research, go back into his research to find out which of the parcels, to make sure he has a comprehensive mm -hmm. list of all the parcels that would need to have the um, reference in the recording. So could you check with him and see where he is? Yeah. Like and, I said, and the we have a special time being coming up. It's taken quite a bit of our time. So That's right. So I'm still just making lists of things. Okay. There was, uh, let's see, one last thing. Um, oh, where the, they mentioned the Tennessee pipeline, and we were talking about what really our capabilities are, where are our rights or abilities to make any difference in that. Were you able to find out? what our rights are yet we've asked it's still not clear still not clear yeah. I mean we asked before the holidays mm -hmm. as soon as I have something I will communicate that to the board I thought I had okay. said that. Yeah. all right so we don't have that yet and uh, the last thing street lights when was the 
audit? I know you said there was a new timeline on them. When was yeah, the we timeline? actually, um, Chad Thompson's putting together the contract. Mm -hmm. And we should get that. I, I finally, this week, got approval from mm -hmm. Green Communities to use the grant money and take care of all that. We had to provide some additional mm -hmm. documentation. That took a while. Mm -hmm. um, but we got the green light. No pun intended. So now we're, do we have to get, it's being put out to bid by Chad or Chad's no, no, just no, no, working no, no. on the contract? No, 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 we're signing the contract with Real Term Energy. Okay. So the audit should begin within a matter of days. Mm -hmm. um, and I did check in with West Springfield and Agawam, and they are uh, basically, once we get our contract signed, I'll send them mm -hmm. our boilerplate and I would anticipate that they would follow suit. Great. Thank you. Tom? Yeah, I, like Marie, I've been pondering the, the bump um, mm -hmm. outside the shops and, uh, you know, when you approach the, um, like the toll booths, when they used to have toll booths in Massachusetts, but in other states, you'd, you'd hit this series of rumble strips. bumps. Rumble strips. Rumble strips. You know, and, and I almost think that we're in a situation where rumble strips might be something to consider uh, only because with the snow coming, um, all those markers on this road are going to be covered and people are going to be moving along and, and I'm just concerned. And so, um, so again, that's just my two cents on this. I'm sure you've heard plenty of uh, ideas. Uh, the other question, <laughs> oh, yeah. well, you don't have to respond. Oh, you don't yeah. have to respond, I know. The other question is in terms of the, the folks at Westcom, and you look at the contract and you and their Hammond County Retirement Board. Now, uh, originally, uh, you know, if you had police officers who were dispatchers, they probably were in that sort of hazardous duty category and had a retirement uh, age and um, years of service that's lower than a lot of other folks. Mm -hmm. And so I was wondering about the dispatchers here what would their... They're they civilian employees. They're just civilian employees. Okay. All right, great. Just wanted to... Yeah, they're not group four, I think is what it's called, but they're not group in that four. group. Okay, great. Um, I, I have yeah. go, go. put my two cents worth <laughs> into the bump. Um, when I start hearing rumble strips and flashing this, and, you know, it might be simpler just to, like, even it out a little bit rather than hmm. do all this other stuff. Well, I, I mean, I think the, the big thing is, uh, and, and I'm going I'm to push back a little bit, 100% of the cars that pay attention slow down don't bottom out. 100% don't bottom out when they pay attention slow down. Uh, and actually today I got two positive calls on the uh, speed hump, which was nice because it's been nothing but people going, being inattentive and going too fast and hitting it and coming into town hall and screaming at us. You know, I, I think we all saw the Complete Streets plan. The engineers presented it. It was it, 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 it's where it's supposed to be. Um, there are issues with how it, the drivability of it that I, I don't I think just weren't really reflected in the design, and I and we know that. I think the I know that if if it had, if the project had been completed in June or July, we would have been out there already really looking at the um, the grade of the pavement right on either side. There was a drainage inlet right there on the west side of it. And as you know, that the, the road has to pitch towards the inlet. And I think that affects the drivability of it a little bit. But we've spent a lot of time talking about it. Like I said, we hope the radar speed signs will give people more of a visual cue than they have today. Um, but, you know, it, it's, like I said, I've said many times, inattentive drivers going too fast is the reason why that's there. And we hope to make it uh, improve the drivability. I really, there's a million reasons why it just feels different than the one on William Street, but they were built exactly the same. They're marked very similarly. Mm -hmm. The only difference is the bump outs from the sidewalk. Uh, but William Street was a narrower street to begin with. Um, but we're going to keep working at it. I just, you know, I think you're right, Bill. I mean, if, if people, and, and I think rumble strips are like when you're going like 65 miles an hour to know to, to slow down, I think that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's an appropriate, that place isn't an appropriate use for those, but I think it proves the point that people drive too fast through there. Yeah. And like I said, we're, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is studying the area around the shops. People drive too fast through there too. It's a hazardous pedestrian environment and this board um, and our administration have committed to try and improve pedestrian safety in high pedestrian traffic areas. So I would guess that as we look at the triangle around the shops, Raised crosswalks are going to be something we take a long look at. Um, now we'll learn some lessons from how we did this one, but you know it's it's an important feature, um, and people generally are slowing down. Not everyone, 
but people generally are slowing down. So it is having, to some extent, its intended effect for pedestrians, anyway. Thanks. I, I just have a couple of questions, Stephen. The first one is, is just to ask that you include, you know, some of the things Marie mentioned and a couple of things that I, I'm interested in, and just in future monthly reports. Marie mentioned the Bliss Park deed update and the street lights. I think those are ongoing issues mm -hmm. that we'd like to have reported on. Uh, also, uh, I, th I think that our library negotiations, I don't know what's, what the status is of that. And you know, what we, our, our comment was we were gonna prepare a response to the, the library board, and I would like to follow up with that. So if you could just, yeah, I'm not gonna defer that was our, right now. I don't, but I'm going to. I don't think that that's what we said. What is it you think we said? I, I, I don't really remember where we left it, but I don't think it was us preparing a response. I'll go back, but I oh. thought it was, we were gonna go back to them with a, a proposal based on the select board's input back to, to our, our town council. I'll have to go Isn't back and look. Would, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I thought I mean, we used to do. Yeah, I know I, I had volunteered to sit in on that meeting if there was some. I don't recall there being a, like a, a, something on the radar, but I, I could be wrong. We'll go, I think I'll go back it's in line. worth for a reach out since there seems to be confusion. Mm -hmm. right. I'll mm -hmm. follow up on that. The, the last thing is more, more for, I don't know, Paul Pesterzik or whatever. There was, in, in one of the copies of the minutes we got, we got copies of the Community Preservation Minutes. They talked about this project that was approved by town meeting, I think a couple of years ago, to put docks on the riverfront that uh, based on community preservation funding, yeah. and they're now saying they're going to abandon that project. It's not feasible or not possible or not engineering, whatever it is. Don't we need a, a, a more formal vote since the town voted to spend the money for the town to vote to unspend the money? We no, can just we, we would probably just close it out into the community preservation fund at the end of the year. That's <coughs> historically what we do with any leftover, any, any special project. Right, but this project wasn't done. I mean, there's a, there, there's a town meeting expecting docks to be built, and I think there's somehow you know, and money was, was appropriate for it. It's one thing that if we appropriate X dollars and we only need Y dollars, we just close it out. But this was a case of there was a project appropriated, approved, and is, you know, it seems to me that you go to town meeting, you ask the whole town for, to approve a project, it's difficult for me to understand how the Community Preservation Commission can on their own say, well, we're, we decided not to do it. I, I think the, whoever asked for the money has abandoned the project. Well, we're right. I, I'm not. I'm not questioning we yeah. shouldn't abandon the project. I just think we need to. I, I thought that we somehow needed the. It's kind of like underspending a, an appropriation. A, you know, a, a bond appropriation. We have to go back and and and, and make that correction because we told the town we were going to spend a certain. But amount. with the bond appropriation, there's a specific statute that says you have to go uh, back to town meeting. Uh, well, yeah, with, with with other funds, mm -hmm. there are no specific statutes where we would just close that out put it back to the community preservation unfunded or, or undesignated fund balance, and they could respend it at a future time. And, and, and I have no problem with us doing that. I, my only question, that's why I started this question, is mm -hmm. ought we not be, A, communicating that decision to the general population who voted for this project, and potentially, B, just get them to endure, yeah, you know, yeah, we're going to take the money back. I mean, I, you know, I guess it, it if it takes the town to appropriate the money, shouldn't it take the town to unappropriate the money? That's my question. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and if it's n no big deal, I'd prefer that we just do that, just as a clerical kind of thing, rather than say the, that you know, we've got eight people who can appropriate money and then choose whether or not they want to spend it. And, and it's not this project, because this project's pretty straightforward, but it could be a future project that you know, there's a change in the community preservation. They say, well, we no longer want this project, and I wouldn't want them to be able to go through and, and if you will, squash a project just because they changed, decided to, if the town appropriated it. Mm -hmm. In terms of communication, they do file, they do prepare annual reports that talk about this, the projects that have gone on during the year. Fine. I, again, I, I was not surprised that nothing's been done on it, because I see nothing's been done on it. I'm not surprised that it's not feasible that's being withdrawn. I'm just looking for a, 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 you know, a comment on how do we formally just withdraw this project before town meeting. I don't know if it's anybody else, if it's only me or anybody else has thoughts. Marie. I think if you're going to request it in a certain form, it's got to be withdrawn from that form. And if you don't feel it should be a warrant article, maybe a report should be stated before CPC articles that CPA is commenting 
what projects didn't go forward or maybe even ones that were completed or maybe a report handed out at town meeting so they know what happened to the last set so I can see your concern about the information not being passed to the legislative branch yeah I because I you know when that passed I thought that this is great oh, yeah. you know I like to go on the river and canoe and kayak and I said oh we have a dock and um, so it would be nice for people who voted for it to know where the sort of obstacles were to that happening. Um, and I wonder if people who, so the folks who were sort of promoting that, you know, did they have reasonable notice to say that, you know, if, if we don't hear from you at this point in time, then, you know, we're going to abandon the funds. Uh, they probably did. No, no, I think they recommended that it be, a, it wasn't the CPC oh, oh, doing it on their own. They. They, my reading was that, Stephen, I don't know, you may know I more, know. but I, yeah. was it the people who... Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah. so I'm going to editorialize for a second, I think. It would, well, first of all, I, this happened on Center School. Uh, there was a project for the kind of fi fixing the balustrade and little, uh, there's, an, um, there's a little patio, for lack of a better term, area outside the gymnasium at Center yeah. School. We were going to replace yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, something came up. I think we had boiler projects or some, some other issue came up. library. Oh yeah, the library windows became more important, mm -hmm. and I thought that the town meeting vote for the library project also amended the prior vote to give the funds to center school. Mm -hmm. But one of it, yeah, so one of the things with CPA, and I've discussed this with the chair of the CPA numerous times. Uh, we just went through this with uh, converting Blueberry some land, some of the the you know yard area around Blueberry School into uh, soccer fields and putting in irrigation systems. Citizens come up with these projects for municipal land mm -hmm. without understanding, you know, the level of engineering we put into our own pro projects, uh, you know, prevailing wage, permitting, things like that. And they come, the CPA seems, thinks it's on its face, you know, a valuable project mm -hmm. without knowing that it's like two years of permitting with the Army Corps of Engineers to do the dock thing. Mm -hmm. And they give the money without knowing that. Um, but the we got an estimate from a, a citizen went out and got an estimate from an irrigation company for Blueberry. And it's not a knock on the citizen. I mean, it, it's, it was a good idea. I mean, we supported the idea of the project. But we went out to bid, which is what we have to do with projects that happen on town land. Mm -hmm. And they got an estimate for, I don't know, call it 40000 The bid was like 120, And this happens every single year on projects that are put in by citizens for town mm -hmm. um, for town assets. Um, we don't have that problem when we submit projects for town assets. We you know, do the due diligence. So um, this is, I mean, Mark, you, you raise a good point. Um, it is not all that uncommon that this ends up happening. And then the CPA has to decide for themselves. Um, like uh, an example is, is the Wolf Swamp Field Master Plan. The board, this board said, we're in. It should be a debt exclusion, um, but we have two hundred fifty or yeah, two hundred fifty thousand dollars in town meeting appropriations uh, already for that project, and you know, should we give those back now or should we hang on to them pending the outcome of the vote because then we can still carry forward wor the work that was authorized by town meeting if the debt exclusion vote does not pass either town meeting or at the ballot box. So that's one of these kind of open questions. CPA I think has decided to not take the money back, if you will, or request the money back, or however they do it, because they want to see what happens with the vote. But it's a pretty common thing. I, I just, I guess I thought when we go vote the next year at town meeting, they do rewrite the previous votes. I'd just like to add, actually, on that subject matter, the community preservation is meeting Wednesday, and I think they are considering doing their own bond for the Wolf Swamp Field project, mm -hmm. and they would fund it out of CPC, um, their, own, their own revenue. Yeah, and, and, and I, well, I, I've heard that also, and I, I was surprised that, because I wasn't aware that the CPC has the authority to issue bonds and pay for it. Well, they would make a recommendation to town. I mean, they, right, they, they, right, they, they, they don't, don't wanna... bond themselves, but, right. but CPC monies can be used to pay off a bond yes. as opposed to just an annual project. And from the taxpayer's point of view, you know, the select board may want to reconsider our, our decision to, or our you know directive to do a debt exclusion because a CPC funded bond 
would not impact tax rates at all. Where you know, and even though you know the uh, debt exclusion doesn't impact our twenty-five dollar limit, it still goes on people's tax rates. Whereas a, a CPC funded bond doesn't impact taxes at all Correct. because it's money coming out of CPC funding. And mm -hmm. having learned that the CPC has the authority to recommend bonding to be paid for by CPC, it seems to me that that's probably a, a better idea. I don't, what I was thinking about doing is, because we've got that question, we've got the mm -hmm. Wolf Swamp Road, uh, <coughs> it's Wolf Swamp Road project, maybe the docs, maybe I'll give Steve Weiss a call and, and see if he has a, some time to come to a meeting just to explain to Tom to you and the people at home, mm -hmm. you know, what the what they heard and why they're they made that change on the on the docks and maybe some other things. Mm. And I guess Paul, is this the first time the CPC has considered doing this? Or have they ever done it in the past before? Doing abandoning a project? No, 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 oh, no. Bonding. Oh, oh bonding. To, to bonding. Yes. 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 First time our local first CPA has. Yeah. But our, but our, but our capital bonded, planning yeah. committee has yeah. bonded. Mm -hmm. They bonded the, the police and fire station. Okay. And it came out of, excuse me, they recommended bonding. It was paid for out of the capital appropriation. So there's a period of mm -hmm. 12 years or so that mm -hmm. we had $170,000 or $200,000 or something. Some, a lot of, you know, we had a lot less money. We only had $180,000 instead of whatever because a majority of our capital money was going toward paying yeah. off a bond to the, to the public safety complex. So yeah. it's not a, an unheard of process in town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. sounds good. Richard. Yeah, I've, I heard what Steve was saying, and I agree with everything that's been said, but I, I think there's, I've got a lot of concern that uh, CPC approves a project that obviously on your side of the world you know has a year and a half worth of engineering buildup or permitting without them having knowledge of that. I, it, it seems like there's something there in there that's broken, and it, and it doesn't... It just doesn't seem right that they would obligate money, only to find out a year and a half later you can't can't do anything with it. So I've had that conversation with CPA with Steve Weiss. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> the idea um, that a citizen can request the money directly from the committee, and then and then by extension directly town meeting is a core principle of the Community Preservation Act. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a, a, a great part of it, where as a resource manager or an asset manager, really more specifically, mm -hmm. it drives me nuts is I know technically municipal assets belong to everybody, but they're managed by a small number of people, including me and the board and the school committee. And citizens who aren't as knowledgeable about processes or permitting or whatever the issue is, mm -hmm. Um, encumbering money for a project on a municipal asset that eventually, not eventually, that immediately upon approval by town meeting becomes a town project that we didn't build into our resource planning or anything else is something that is frustrating. Um, and it has nothing to do with the merits of the project at all. Uh, it's just more of a, like I said, a, a, a workflow processing thing. Um, I don't know the answer, but I definitely had that discussion. I don't think it's within the statute. I don't think they had the statutory authority to basically say we're not going to accept requests for projects on municipal assets unless they're from the town itself. Uh, I, I've obviously, you guys know me. I've obviously pitched that, <laughs> but I don't know that that's. Um, I don't know if they, that that's viable under the CPA statute. Mm -hmm. So we just work. We just try and work through it as best we can. Really, quite honestly, we just try and work through it. But um, you know, as we know, we. We're lucky in this community that we have a lot of uh, very intelligent people who have good ideas. And, and so yeah. when something like putting a field at Blueberry shows up or putting a dock on the river shows up, uh, even though you know it's, it's really not feasible for the way CPC funds are, or what, you know, the funds are, are uh, put together, should that be something that should then be moved to our long-term plans because basically the town has already said this seems like a good idea for our community and is it something not that every plan we have can move moved forward on but um, you know should I guess that's the question I asked the board I mean do you think this is something that we should because I you know I could see some of these projects really being of value and they're good contributions in terms of what we can do to make Longmeadow a better place to live um, so 
well, as long as you're asking, my answer yeah. is they, they may be very good projects, but where do they fit within the priorities of all our other things, Tom? And so, yeah. you know, by the nature of the CPA, CPC, the Community Preservation Commission, and, and the citizen petitions, they get they have a separate list of priorities. So right. stuff yeah. can be on their priority that wouldn't even show up on our priority because they have a right. separate pile of money. So I have no problem considering it, but and, and I'm not judging this particular project, but many of these projects probably wouldn't show up on our on, on our list, and that's the issue. Right. So well, I mean, if you want to bring it up here, bring yeah. them up here, but we'll, we'll yeah. then decide where it fits with all our other funding. That's Because even if we put them at the bottom of the list, I don't know what other people think about something like that. You know, uh, can I just build on Mark's point? Well, I was just wanted to ask the, the other oh, board ahead. members if they... Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it informally it becomes part of the discussion. I think that sometimes citizens' petitions have come forward. The, uh, you started working on Wolf Swamp, but as we got the citizens' petitions, it started to morph and change the the project. So I think it's more of a cooperative, interactive thing that um, we hear the legislative branch, and then it starts to start pulling into projects. I think that uh, the tennis courts that was really driven by the That's legislative true. branch, and then that it became something that was accepted and co-opted by the uh, professional staff as well as the select board and parks. And mm -hmm. so I think it is. It's it's sort of an informal way that it responds. I think what Mark was saying is let's put a little formality to it so that the communication goes back to the legislative branch once it goes through the pro town process and we might find it's not working because of a bid or something, mm -hmm. it should go back to the legislative branch even if it's just an informal report that's handed out within the, what's that big report you hand out? Oh, what's that called? Yeah, the GFOA budget. Right, there's that, but it's also more or less in the annual report. Annual yeah, town report. Right. There's annual there's, town report. Right. Every, every committee yeah. puts a report. And in CPA there. does have uh, their own individual report that they do. Um, and so they should probably include projects that were no longer. I, I, I haven't read one of their reports in a long time, but I, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure they do. We, we part of their budget um, that we vote on at town meeting is administrative. They get a bu they get a budget for to hire an administrative person, and that person mm -hmm. develops their report. And, and I mean, but yeah. just to build on, CPA can only be used for a, a narrow mm -hmm. set of things. I want to kind of go back to the, right. the, the 101 stuff. Um, the reason why I, I wasn't here, I don't know that I was around when CPA got written by the Commonwealth, but my view of how, why it exists is they it preserves funding in communities who choose to levy it for things that will always drop off the list of priorities for just about every municipality that's struggling to pay the bills year to year. Open space, affordable housing, recreation, uh, and then someone designated, but still subject to some, the restrictions of the statute. Um, and that's why, like I said, that's why it's there. Um, because we have a lot of municipal buildings in the historic district, a lot of our projects fall into the historic preservation line, which is great, because otherwise we'd be, even, we'd be doing less work in terms of maintaining our infrastructure. Um, but I, I think you're right. I think it, it is an excellent <coughs> vehicle. It is an excellent way for citizens who have good ideas to kind of put those forward and ask the legislative branch, ask the committee and the legislative branch directly. And like I said, I think that's the essence of the CPA. All I'm saying is, from an administrative standpoint, mm -hmm. you end up with projects, and you know, if you're for NFL fans, they call it dead cap space um, for a couple of years mm -hmm. because for whatever reason, the project wasn't either, the application didn't really reflect the true cost or true process of the project. That's my only point. And like I said, yeah. we've taken on a bunch of them and tried to do the best we can. We go out to bid with them in a timely fashion, but, you know, sometimes it's out of our hands. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the community preservation people actually in their minutes do address the Riverfront project docs. Well, yeah, that's where I, I got picked yeah. up from the minutes. The, 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 the bigger question is, though, do, you know, does the general population in Long Meadow read, read the minutes of the Community Preservation Committee? Well, I would argue that the general population go to town meeting, too. <laughs> <laughs> but those who vote do. <clears throat> You're right. All right, let's move on. I'm you know, going to really move good. on to old business. We have a, to approve minutes of the December 17th <clears throat> regular me meeting. Is there a, a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Is there a second? A second with amendment. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, the only thing is there's one point um, where it talks about the um, 
the new tax revenue, and there's a, a quote from myself, and it just says that, um, so let's see, that is, yeah, right up here, let me just see. Um, I don't know what paragraph this would be. But it, it, there's a, a point, the paragraph starts with Marie Angelides after the board assessors did random audits, and it ends with Tom LaCusa would like to point out there's a lot of conveniences in town. Uh, and I would say, after that, I would like to put down uh, that could be lost, and he feels it's worth it to keep a single tax rate. So just after that, um, where it says town, you say conveniences in town, that he feels could be lost. Because I, I was talking specifically about like uh, banquet facilities that, you yeah. know, if, if there was the Way golf here. course that was turned into condominiums, that we wouldn't, we'd lose that option. So, yeah, that's it. Okay. Jackie, you got yeah. that? Okay. There it is. So, okay. With that, with that, with that change, lost. I'll call for a vote. Any, any other comments? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of the minutes? <coughs> Any opposed? Votes 5-0 again. Thank minutes you. of the December 19th, which is the, the continuation and the actual vote on our, our uh, I mean, technically I think they're one set of minutes, but we're going to do it separately. Yeah. So yeah. Richard made a motion. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Lowe. Any right. uh, comments? All those in favor? Any opposed? Actually, you were abstention. You weren't there, Mark. No, I was there for the 19th. The 19th? Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking. Oh, I, I think the next special one. Yeah, I didn't shoot, get I was thinking of the special. Did you get so the minutes? So now the question yeah. is did anybody take minutes of <laughs> yes. the. I did, yes, and Marie Paul did. did. Okay, but so I didn't get them to Jackie. I'm sorry, till, till just now I realize, so I will try to do that. <coughs> <coughs> okay, so we, yeah, if you can get the minutes, we, we'll uh -huh. prove those at the next one. We, there was a special meeting on December 28th, I believe, that was uh, to. Uh, uh, approve the warrant for the special town meeting. Right. And that's the minutes that we don't have right now. Okay. Uh, but we'll get those to you. The, the next item of business is gonna be follow-up actions on the charter, charter review committee. And I didn't get a whole lot of feedback based on last months or last, the last meeting we had. So I'm gonna kind of take it upon myself to uh, move forward with the proposal that I was looking for, which was to separate this out into a couple of couple of items. And the first item was the those sections that are considered, <coughs> excuse me, administrative and recommendations. And uh, as we go through those, the you know we can look at each one of them. And the the language is essentially to bring the charter so that it's no longer a transitional document. Uh, and also bring the charter in line with uh, current Mass General Open Open Meeting laws. Uh, and so the questions were uh, sections 17, 2-5A, 2-8A, 3-1B, 4-4, which is, uh, again, different committees uh, where, where, where minutes of different committees and appointments should be located. Uh, and section 6-3B, which says the, the, which really had the Department of Public Works transitionary uh, organization, which is no longer in, in effect, so it would eliminate the transitionary comments. Section 6-5B, which is also the transitionary uh, effect for uh, parks and recreational Commission prior to the adoption of the charter, which would eliminate that. Section 8-7J, uh, which it was to uh, clarify the manner of giving notice for town meetings. And then Section 9, which would uh, be deleted because it dealt with entirely its trans transitional provisions. It was all transitional provisions. And so my question is, does anybody here have any comments or concerns about taking those, and, and I don't know whether the best way to do that is into two or three, but not one, uh, articles for the Springtown meeting so we can move forward to get those changes done. Richard. Yeah, I had a question on 4-4. Uh, four, four. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've read it two or three times. I'm not sure I understand what the intent of their, uh, their comments were. 
where the panels and their purposes would be listed. Stephen, you were part of this meeting. So what, what's going on with 4-4, do you know? I'd have to go back and look at the report, but we talked a lot about um, the number of boards and committees. Mm -hmm. um, I did say at the Charter Review Committee that there probably needs to, but it wasn't a charter. It wasn't a charter issue about some kind of consolidation or some kind of omnibus review of boards and committees. But I think their their point was um, there's really nothing in the charter that says you know boards and committees. You know if you want to basically one stop shop to find out what a board and committee is supposed to do, it really do, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the purpose of this. Okay, because I, I was a little confused as to what the intent was. Yeah, in inventory with, I mean, I think Debbie probably does have most of it already, um, but there right. are some that, um, you know, may not be covered. And like I said, I think if we did that inventory, then, it would, like I said, this, this kind of omnibus review that I feel is something that should be a you know, goal of the boards um, would be uh, e much easier. But the, the inventory does exist, and I do publish it in my... The budget and, and the and the financial, the CAFR. Um, I don't know if it's in the town report, but it is published at least most <coughs> mm -hmm. publications. So, so Richard, the section four four as it's written says there shall be shall be such other town committees as the town may establish by bylaw, right. by vote of town meetings, or by uh, may otherwise be established by the select board or school committee. Such committees shall be monitored and dissolved as appropriate by their appointing authorities. Right. That's where it currently right. ends, and all they're suggesting is that we add the sentence, the identity and purpose of such committees shall be listed in the offices of the town manager. I thought it should really be listed in the offices of the town manager and the, and the public library. If, that, if the intent is to make it available to the general public, you know, we have a, a bylaw that requires Contra union contracts to be listed, uh, you know, put in the public in the library and stores library. I would think that just a document that same one that's in your office, Stephen, that sits in the, somewhere the town documents in the public library would make sense so people could understand what's the purpose of the historic commission versus the historic district commission or whatever. No? Well, a few town meetings ago, um, we put together actually a pizza party for all the committees and one of the things I did at that time when I reached out to all the chairs is I asked them all to give a, a quick just a little description of, of what their committee did and the members on their committee currently and those were all turned into Deb I believe right and, and she had that master so she process. probably so she has that and and uh, I don't uh, you know I think some folks may have missed you know didn't turn it in but uh, but we have a <coughs> basic group of those descriptions by the committees of those uh, right and, and, of those and I think that's all they're asking for yeah, is yeah, so we have that but we make it accessible to the public and yeah. from my perspective Stephen your office is only open during business hours and that's why I thought adding to it in the public library would be make it available I think we're open probably more hours than the library to be honest with you um, I think the biggest thing Mark is like a collective bargaining agreement you sign it it's basically frozen in time for three years these lists are changing, as you know, regularly. There's a lot of turnover for membership and things like that. And I think right. eventually something. I, I don't think we list the membership. Uh, All we do yeah. is list the, the name the and, and the so called mission the statement. Mission statement. That's right. right. Well, Debbie maintains it now, though. She does. Yeah. yeah. But having to have make sure that the copy in the library or the person on the, on the library's end is taking out old ones and putting in the new ones and then just. Yeah. It, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's just the opportunity for. It's just an opportunity for misinformation. But. Maybe we can six one half the other. See if Deb has it posted on the uh, select board web page. Yeah, right. That would be the best way to approach. And like, like Paul said, we do have the, the that inventory in our GFOA budget too. Does that answer some of your questions? Yeah, I just wondered the purpose of it. I because I thought it was all already being done. <coughs> Apparently not. So uh, one of the things that one of the things that the Charter Review Committee did was look at areas where practice either isn't referred to or is in con contrast with the charter. And or, you know, or vice versa, and just making sure that either change what we do or change the charter to match what we do. Um, and I think that was one of those things where it's not really mentioned, but we do do it, and so it should be something that gets codified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any other comments or questions? Is there any concern about us moving forward with putting these as changes through uh, town warrant? 
through uh, Warren articles on the upcoming town annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. I, w I wouldn't think you need too many Warren articles for them, though. Well, I, and pretty, we can do it as one. We can do it as, I'm just saying if we break it down. Yeah, they're just, pretty benign. Yeah. Uh, You're talking about just having one just, Warren article for administrative recommendations? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, you're, and this is section one. We're just dealing with right. it. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I think that was. Okay. Are you looking for a motion? Yes, I am. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Marie's made a motion. Bill Lowe, Lowe has seconded it that we direct the town manager to add a one or more as necessary warrant articles that include those 10 recommendations of the Charter Review Committee on the spring annual town meeting. Did I capture that correctly? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any other comments or questions? All those in favor? The vote is unanimous 5-0. Which one are you going to take up next meeting, Mark? Well, what I'd like to do is move down the, down the list, Richard, and, and take up that second section on... Uh, capital planning? Cap... Section 2. Section yes. 2 is capital. Cap, yeah, Section 2 is capital planning. Capital planning. Okay. You're going to do that today or next... Well, I, it, you know, we have some time. I'd like to... Do, I'd like to start discussing it today, and then maybe we can finalize it and clean it out and vote on it at the next meeting. But the, the issue is that the Capital Planning Committee, the, the, the recommendations of the Charter Review Committee uh, are that we modify the, the role of the Capital Planning Committee somewhat. And uh, through the adjustment of Section 77 of the Charter, which currently references the Capital Planning Committee's roles and responsibilities. Uh, and it also it, it looks to adjust uh, another section, I guess, two, by adding a Section 2 11, which would, uh, I think they've shown what they, in, their, in their report. That it, it states more this, the, the membership of the Capital Planning Committee recommends the membership of the Capital Planning Committee and the, or the qualifications of the members of the Capital Planning Committee and some other things. So I don't know if there's any other discussion, if, any, if everybody's had a chance to read through that. But Well, the one, the one change I saw is that we've never had twice yearly capital approvals. I know that's being proposed. I think the reason it's being proposed is, is that, that we found ourselves in that situation last, this past year. Well, I think that was through necessity, though. That was some failures that took place. I, I'm, I'm not convinced that, that, that video recorders in the police vehicles no, that wasn't, were, no. were, were, were due to failures or... Right, no, I, I, I can understand a piece of equipment yeah, fault. Yeah, talking about a vehicle. But, but I think, you know, Stephen made a compelling discussion that says the town's got to run, t you know, 12 months a year and can't just run based on uh, once a year approval of capital. And if we're going to do that, then this would be a better way to do it, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, what are you going to do about uh, the funds? You're just going to leave half the funds hanging over to the next I think period? that's the Capital Planning Committee's you know, recommendation, I guess. I, I think it's, it's more if we know we're going to want to pursue um, capital items, whether it's through free cash or something else, then there should be some capital planning process to it. But I don't mm -hmm. think it's a 50-50 split. I, I think historically if there was any residual balance that they didn't appropriate, we put it in the capital stabilization fund, mm -hmm. meaning if we're allotting them $2 million and they're only expending $1.5 in the spring, that the other half million dollars be put into the capital stabilization fund, and then in the fall they would withdraw from the capital stabilization fund. Well, the other thought though that I had had was was you know we've got a list of 25 items, and you know we we think you know 20 of them are really good, and you know but we're going to fund 15 of them right now and hold back on five to see if something else sneaks in there that's more important than those five, recognizing that those five yes would be delayed by six months, but they. 
you know, but they would be funded this fiscal year if nothing more important comes, comes up. You know, and that's one way of looking at it is saying, here's our primary recommendation, here's a, if you will, a, a deferrable recommendation, a recommendation we, we, we're going to defer until the fall town meeting. And if something better comes up, we're going to adjust it from, from that. I mean, again, nothing's perfect, but if, you know, if something more important comes up, you want to be able to, to have the capital to buy it. Tom. Well, I would just, you know, looking at this, and it, well, well, all these sections here, if we were to overlay this document that we're looking at, and we voted on the first section, and um, align it with the document that was turned in by the Charter Review Committee, how much difference is there between the two of them, between this document and what they turned in? This document essentially is what they turned okay. in. Okay, all right, I just want to be sure, okay. Well, there's a couple of editorials in there, yeah. but but those are put down under the comment section or yeah. or comment. Okay. whatever it is. But they're not. But but the first section of it, Tom, which just it says, you know, I, I think I put it as commentary. The commentary is my commentary, but the right. the section theirs and then what it would be placed in is right out of their report. Oh, good. Yeah. Great. So that's. I just want to be sure. You know, Mark. For some reason, and I'm not say Stephen practices, but. Robin was very compelled not to want to develop a capital plan that was meaningful. And I had a lot of stress with it because I came from an environment where we had a 20-year plan. And we stuck to it. Not saying an emergency didn't come up, but man, you know, you were federal too. They handled the emergencies too. But there was a blueprint that said, if everything rolls along the way we think it's going to be, this is what we're going to do. Now, DPW's done a great job on their pavement management program. They're up to speed now. They've got a seven, what, a five, seven-year program, mm -hmm. and they they're down to where they've identified streets, cost estimates, and, and that wasn't here seven, eight years ago. So they've come up to speed, mm -hmm. and that's the way a capital program should be run. It's not to say that you can't bring a project in, because something things happen, mm -hmm. and you bring in like the camera deal. It's a new thing. You bring it in, you weigh it against the other priorities, and you fund, which we did. But I, I still think we're growing and we're getting stronger every year. It seems to be getting closer and closer to having a realistic plan because theoretically, Mark, you dealt with it. I dealt with it in business. Anybody was business and you had a 10-year plan and when you finished this year, the nine-year plan slipped down or the 10-year went to the nine-year then the eight-year. Sometimes there was ones that were pulled and pushed, but you had a general blueprint that if I was pulled before a congressional committee, I could do an outreach and say, okay, I'm forecasting $5 million every year for asphalt surfaces or for toilet rehabilitations or campground rehabilitation, whatever it is. That was my plan. And that's what I like to see. And I think, I think we're moving closer to that. But it is stressful because it takes people to do planning. And condition, you have to do condition assessments at least every once or two years to make sure that your plan's accurate and it's you know, especially in the asphalt, as you will, well know, the winter time we got road like grassy gutters. It's not on the five-year plan. It's not going to make it. Yeah, it's literally falling apart because of the construction of the high school destroyed the road with the heavy traffic. Uh, I think, to your point, Richard, the stuff that's more knowable and predictable: water mains, yeah. sewer mains, <clears throat> uh, drainage, pavement, sidewalks. Right. Um, our, we do, in fact, do that where we have a five-year plan, and I think our, our estimates go out even longer. But it just you're on the list for this year, right. next year, and other than a, a unplanned failure of a road or a sidewalk or something else, we usually we pretty much stick to that. It's the one-off projects that are a lot more difficult to mm -hmm. chart on a five-year plan because you know we can look at a and we I'll use boilers as an example because they're the most um, they, they've been the most challenging for us in the last few years. You can look at those burn boilers and have sections leaking and say, but you can't say, we think that's going to leak for another three years and then quit, so we're going to put it on for a three-year plan. You, ha you, ha you have to fix it. You have to replace it if, if you think it's close because you, the schools need to have heat or you can't have school. Um, I remember one of the first ones I did was the track at the high school here. Um, went from non-existence as a project to number one priority of the schools, and we have that a lot. So mm -hmm. the ones that are no, even equipment, all right. equipment, roads, sidewalk, all those things that are, are predictable, we, I think we do, we do a much better job of sticking to the <coughs> five-year plan. It's, it's the one-offs that I'll say we struggle with, but it's, it's, it's the, the greatest variables on our, on our five-year plan 
are the ones that are like single individualized projects. Well, and as I said, I and I sincerely mean it. I've been in town for what nine years or so, but I've been involved with the town for those nine years, mm -hmm. and the improvements that are made in planning mm -hmm. are significant. They're just okay. unbelievable compared to what it was, Steve. Because you weren't here back in the first day with Robin Crosby, but the, the, you couldn't. You got it. You had a book that big. Mm -hmm. But it basically, uh, it wasn't BS, but it might as well have been BS because it wasn't going to work because the thing flipped all the time. It was no, it was guesstimates. Mm -hmm. But Paul, you know, that's why the year me race came. We had projects that came in. Uh, you, you're talking about the citizen project. We had projects being bid out there that we had to come back and double the price for them because mm -hmm. we don't know where the price was coming. They were just educated guesses, it looked like. And we have matured that much at this point now. And I, and I think a lot of that falls under your leadership, too. Well, I, I appreciate that. I mean, I do want to commend the leadership of the, both the CPA and the Capital Planning Committee. Um, they, the, especially the two chairs, Steve Metz and Steve Weiss, have, spent, have invested a lot of their time on a volunteer basis to working with me and Mario and the other DPW personnel to really get the process that works well for them, too. So I want to commend the boards and commit to those two committees for being excellent partners and kind of refining our process. Mm -hmm. well, Tom, were you going to add something? Uh, I, what I was going to say is I, I think what we've got is some great recommendations from the uh, Charter Review Committee, and, and I put in some thoughts I had on there under that, again, under the list that says commentary. So Richard, I don't know, as a former chair of the Capital Planning Committee, if you have other thoughts, but what I'd like to do is kind of come back at our next meeting with a, a, if you will, a consolidated recommendation of, if, if nobody objects to that, of, based on the, the best of what the Charter Review Committee said, and maybe some of my comments, some of Richard's comments, anybody else who has any other comments wants to get them to me, and, and if Richard can get them to me, we'll come back with a final recommendation. But Tom, the, in, in essence, it is the taking on the, the recommendation of the Charter Review Committee. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you want to try to get written comments to you, Mark? Yeah, if you could. Okay. Okay, so we'll do that, and we'll come back with a, if you will, a unified plan to admit. My, my goal would be to get that this section also into the, uh, in, into the spring annual town meeting. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to get other sections, only because of timing and the closure of the right. warrant. We might be able right. to sneak another one in. I'm, I'm not sure, but, but I'd like to try to get a couple of these sections in for the spring town meeting so we can... Take care of that. All right? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, we're going to move on then to new business. We have to set the annual town meeting, excuse me, the annual town election date. Right now we have a, there's a, a memo from our town clerk, uh, Catherine Ingram. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen it, but essentially she gives us recommendations based on uh, town meeting to town election interval and the requirements that things from town meeting may need to be, you know, we need to have the opportunity to potentially change them at the town election. There also potentially has to be time for a preliminary election should we have more than twice the number of people running for seats as our seats open. And so the short and the long of it is she's recommending Tuesday, June 11th, 2019 uh, with a preliminary election uh, as the as the date of the fin annual town election with the preliminary election to be held Tuesday April 23rd 2019 and within that she's got dates for uh, taking out nomination papers returning nomination papers etc so does anybody have any comments or questions otherwise uh, I, I didn't have a question I yes, just go ahead so um, I just, so the so a preliminary election, and so that's in the case where you have, you know, a lot more people running than you can put. So there are two people running for the select board. If more than four right. people, no, it's more than twice the number of people to each seat. So if more, right. for a select board, there's two seats. So if more than right. four people run for housing committee, yeah. if there's more than two people running for the one seat, then you have to have a preliminary election. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and so and the same thing for school committee. And right. How often do we have? Like you would know, actually, probably exactly. Well, we, well, How many I can times only remember a couple in, in, in my memory, but 
I'll, t I'll tell you, Tom. I think had it I, very I, early. I've been actually talking to Catherine Ingram about this because you know yeah. Maine is trying this interesting thing called preferential voting, so you don't have a runoff, and it might be something. Oh. Now we're not obviously geared up to do that. Jackie's dying if I say <laughs> that, but it, it, it's mm -hmm. much tougher to count the ballots. But for people who understand it, essentially, if there's three people running for one seat. Yeah. You just say, this is my first choice, my second choice, oh, my I third see. choice, right. and then they vote, and if nobody gets a majority of votes, then then the third, everybody who put number, the third person is number one, They're, they now look at who they put for number two and reassign it and that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. but for now, right now, yeah, we've, we've done it a few times, and in my opinion, it's only my opinion, this preliminary election system tends to hold back people from submitting nominating papers because they think, well, gee, you know, if I'm doing this, it's going to cost the town another four, four or five thousand bucks to run a, a, you know, a preliminary election, and sometimes they don't want to do that, but, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's the nature of the town, is, is the requirement that you need a majority of votes to be elected, and therefore, in order to get a majority, mm -hmm. you have to have a, a runoff system. Yeah. Now, uh, my understanding is that there are some towns <coughs> in the eastern part of the state that have their town elections in November, you know, and they parallel them. And, and so uh, I think it's something that people in town are talking about only because, and I, I guess I would be open, not we're going to do it at this point in time, but that um, now that we have people voting prior to election day, uh, we had a lot of the people voting prior to election day. Right. You know, that if we had both elections in, November, in a November date, uh, it's something that you know, I think that people in the community are going to ask us to consider. I'm just kind of giving you a heads up. Um, that that and, and that's fine. I, no. I, my response to them or to you would be the intent is to bring a new group of, of leaders, whether it's the select board, the school <coughs> committee, out, into office at the start of the fiscal year, hmm. which is what our election intends to do by running an election in June, by mm -hmm. July 1st, where our meetings are set. and. We are here for the entire fiscal year, and so there's a an ownership and responsibility for the fiscal year, and I think that's a there's there's something to be said to, to do that, mm -hmm. as opposed to you know general elections that the elections in November those people don't take office until January right. or whatever it is. But I mean I'd be prepared to argue some <laughs> some other way, and, and I think historically the people who've been town a long time will tell you that that our town elections have been all over the place. They've been in November. They've been in in, in, in the winter time, they've been because I know people talked about how cold it is waiting outside Jackie. I don't know if you recall any elections of any other time besides April or May. Yeah, May. so I think they were earlier. So mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, but right now we're just talking about setting the date for. I think we're more or less locked into having them in June this year. Right. So yeah. Marie. So moved. Okay, Marie's Second. made a motion. Bill Lowe seconded it. Okay. Are there any other comments, questions, discussions? All those in favor of setting the town meeting date of June 11? Any opposed? The vote is 5 0. Thank you. Uh, okay. uh, uh, next item of business is a discussion with the t town moderator about a, our special town meeting. And we've got uh, Rebecca Townsend, who's our town moderator here, and she's going to join us up at the uh, hot seat to talk about our, our special town meeting. Rebecca, you, you sent out a a note to you know several committees about yep. some of the things that you're going to do. Maybe you can start with that, and then uh, any other comments you have. Sure. Uh, well, first, as a general reminder, special town meeting will be January 17th. It's a Thursday evening at 7 p.m. sharp. Uh, it, it will follow the usual. It's, and it's in the high school gym. Uh, audit, yes, gymnasium. high school. Um, yeah. And should there be any uh, bad weather? Um, as was discussed at a morning planning meeting, um, Massachusetts general law does permit the moderator in consultation with public safety officials and the select board to recess the town meeting without having people have to gather. And I sent the town manager the link to the, uh, the law that specifies that. Um, and I'll ask that you share that with, with everybody else. Um, and so should there be any ill weather, no one has to drive to town meeting, um, I would make announcements in, in concert with other town officials. That said, the uh, particular uh, item that you're referring to is I did send out uh, some guidance to folks about 
what town meeting will be like on the 17th. Um, I want to discuss the, the articles tonight, the procedures that will follow, um, and answer your questions, of course. Uh, I should note that the um, general procedures, since this will be a, um, an I anticipate a highly attended meeting, I'm asking that all non-voters go to the auditorium. So if <coughs> somebody is, um, and by the way, definition of a non-voter, somebody who is not registered to vote in the town of Longmeadow. Uh, <coughs> presumably, if a parent comes with a very young child, that young child does not need a non-voter sticker. That young child, talking you know, seven years old and younger, thereabouts don't need to go to um, the auditorium. However, if uh, a person is a town employee or school employee or um, a, a teen who is not a voter, they would be ushered to the auditorium where they would seat on the far right side and they would follow the, the usher's directions uh, in that regard. Uh, no non-voters will be speaking at this <coughs> meeting. It's uh, for uh, town voters only. Is there a question? So, uh, students who attended, would they all be considered non-voters? Anyone who's, not a, who, anyone who's not a voter. They're not Correct. a registered voter. Not a registered right. voter, okay. So there yeah. are some students who are registered voters and of course they, they are welcome uh, to go directly into the gymnasium. Okay. And I would encourage all participants, as soon as you check in using the new poll pads, uh, to go, if, when you get your voter card, show your voter card to the people who are standing at the door of the gymnasium, and please, if possible, sit toward the front. We'd like to make sure that the front is filled before the back, and, and that way we can accommodate any latecomers. It's much easier to squeeze somebody in at the back bleachers than it is to ask them to come all the way to the front. So we'll be uh, encouraging people to sit toward the front, if at all possible. The gym will be the main <coughs> speaking room. We will have an audio feed into the uh, auditorium, um, but people who would like to speak, who are town voters, should go to the gymnasium. If the gymnasium is filled, then we will have special sections within the auditorium for voters. So that will be overflow room number one. Mm -hmm. Should overflow room one, the auditorium, be filled, then we will ask people to go to the cafeteria for overflow room two. And we will have assistant moderators in both, both areas. So um, that's a, a really important thing for people to keep in mind is where to sit. Make sure you sit toward the front, and if you know you're going to be a speaker, try to show up early. Regarding the uh, warrant itself and the topics of speech, um, article number one, uh, I've, I've spoken to all the lead petitioners and uh, the lead petitioner for article one has said that uh, he aims to um, move to take no action on article one and that's outlined in those procedures that I uh, published there, instead focusing efforts on article three. And so uh, if Article 1 is approved uh, with a simple majority, then we'll proceed to Article 2. Can you talk a little bit, Rebecca, about what is required to take no action on Article 1? Sure. So uh, the lead petitioner who I'd be recognizing would say, I move to take no action on the article. It would get a second. Uh, it's up for discussion. People can discuss whether or not to take action or no action, and then it comes to a vote. And that will be the raising of the cards. Um, if there is an overflow room, I would be able to communicate with the other moderators, assistant moderators, uh, for an assessment of what the, the vote is like in that room. If there <coughs> is any doubt as to um, majority at all, we'll do a hand count. So we'll take this, uh, the vote, a uh, motion to take no action is simple majority, and then we proceed to Article 2. And Article 2, um, as Town Council has informed me and informed uh, you all as well, is unlawful, uh, and uh, he would be making... Wait a second. Pardon me? Where did you hear that? Because I haven't heard that. Yeah. Well, it was also published in this, the, the guidance 
Um, I didn't get it, there wasn't something there from the town council but uh, that I saw. It says saw in it the somewhere. guidance. And he'll discuss why. Town it. Council will offer his official opinion regarding the unlawfulness under relevant state statutes of this article. See, I read that as whether or not is it lawful or unlawful. You're saying that he's told you that it is unlawful. Yes. Okay, that's news to me. And I, I'm fine, but I didn't gather that. that I just read that differently, Rebecca, that's all. That's fine, I'm not okay. questioning. Well, I did not read it. So the Town Council has opined that Article 2 does not meet the requirements of the statutes of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Yeah, he's, he's there, I'm looking for the... Um, is that a copy of a letter to somebody been, that we ought to get? Was it an email? Yeah, I, I thought I forwarded an email from him, to be honest with you, but... Well, he no. didn't. Hmm? Yeah, we didn't, I didn't get it, I don't know if it was, but... I didn't see it. Sorry, Rebecca, we didn't see it. Did you see, get his note? Well, I, um, he had forwarded me uh, an email. He also talked with me on the phone, and uh, we conferred via email as well. And we've had several meetings, or no, sorry, I'm sorry, one meeting in person where we discussed this as well. Do you remember what the statute was? Uh, yes. It was Chapter 71, mm -hmm. Section 37. And this is in regard to the uh, school <coughs> committee's ability to review and approve Funding. expenditures. Right. Yeah, he has spoken to me about that, um, but I don't have an email and write like an opinion in writing from him, um, which is probably why I haven't forwarded anything to the board. I don't have anything in writing from him. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> I believe there is. I, I'm not going to look through email now. Um, regardless of. If you can find it yes. in the next day or so. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, if you could send it to us, Rebecca. Otherwise, I, I was of the opinion that he was going to opine at the meeting based on of his, you know, mm -hmm. his position on that, but that he had not yet and would not be in issuing an opinion in advance. Now, if that's not correct, I, I that's think fine, but because I don't need to know, it's not my my town meeting, but. Would have been in, would have been nice yeah. to know. I, I th right, I think he <clears throat> has been talking directly to the petitioners. Uh, we did uh, send him the warrant article to look at, but Stephen, I, excuse me, the town council works for us, not the petitioners. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's talking to them and not us disturbs me, as you can uh, tell by the tone of my voice. You I, know, I don't. Has he been talking to the petitioners? I haven't. If he's, you I know, and, he and there's something wrong with that. I mean, we go into this no. year after year. We have ridiculous legal fees because we have citizens all over the place using our town council's time that sometimes you don't know about some, and oftentimes we don't know about. And I just take offense to the fact that he's discussing things with <laughs> petitioners that he's not letting the select board know. He works for us, and or she works for us, and they're gonna find out if they keep doing that, they're not gonna work for us. And I don't know how everybody else on the board feels, but I feel pretty strongly about this. I'm really annoyed that they're going around the select board, and there's nothing here you can say that'll keep me from being annoyed. The fa having somebody tell me he's already issued an opinion, then say he's talked to the petitioners, that's just flat out wrong. He works for us. If, if I may, in my discussions with him, I have asked him sometimes in the, in the past and in the current, current uh, situation, would you be willing to talk to petitioners? And he said no. So he has told me that he has not talked to petitioners. So I share that with you. So, and, and honestly, Mark, I may have that wrong. Fine. Um, I, I hope so. Well, the only thing I'll in case I say one thing, though, honestly, um, the board has, and we're going to get to this, but the board has a long-standing practice of not getting involved with citizens' petitions. <coughs> Absolutely. Right. Town council does advise town meeting. <coughs> On he sit under under the sta under the law, town council sits up in the dais with the moderator and advises the legislative branch directly. It is in that role that Mike has reviewed the warrant and done that. The fact that I and that's his re that's I honestly, his requirement. That's right. we're, and and like I said right. five minutes ago, I expected him to whether he was asked or not to opine at the town meeting right. on what he thought the lawfulness was of the of the of the. Warren article, and very honestly, I think Rebecca, where you're going next is, after he does that, 
the petitioner can choose to do whatever they want to. They can still move forward with the, with the Warren article, or they can say, well, I guess it's not lawful, we'll withdraw it. That's their choice. And if they go ahead and pursue it, should it pass or should it not pass, it's going to get reviewed by the Attorney General, and, it, right? It, this one won't get reviewed by it the won't. Attorney General. That's the, the other thing I was going to share with you was that mm -hmm. it, it, on many articles, especially bylaws, bylaws that uh, town meeting approves, it goes to the Attorney General's office and he'll issue uh, an advisory opinion on citizen petitions. Uh, this <coughs> one does not get reviewed by the Attorney General. So, so it's just that what, what if the <laughs> petitioner should say we choose to disregard the, first of all, what it, you know, I'm going to assume that the town council may vote, may offer an opinion that this is unlawful, okay, based on what I just heard. The petitioners may choose to pursue it anyway, and if it passes, then what happens? We just ignore it? Uh, I, I asked the uh, town council that question. Uh, if town meeting decides to approve <coughs> this particular uh, article, um, town council would reiterate his advice that this is unlawful and would hope that no one would enact it. Well, it would probably go to the AG's office. It does not go to the AG's oh, office, no. The, the problem is, Rebecca, we can't stop people from voting. I mean, this is going to be an emotionally charged this town one? meeting. My opinion is people are going to walk in there knowing how they're going to vote, whether they vote for or against, whatever. That's how they're going to vote. In most town meetings, it's like that. The concern I have is that to say that if we offer an opinion it's not legal and it's passed anyway, we just say, well, you know, we're there wasting our time because we're just not going to do it. I mean, I don't have a problem having somebody tell me you, you cannot do it. I'm fine with that especially if it's somebody with the authority to tell us you cannot do it. The but select board mm -hmm. has the power not to put articles that are unlawful on the warrant, even if they are via citizen petition. Right. If we knew before we voted them on. <laughs> but we didn't know and until I, after. I personally yeah. cannot speak to whether or not they were notified <coughs> because I'm not part of that communication. No. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But I would just... It just you know, in, in terms of the board being notified, I mean, when I read the email that Rebecca sent us prior to this meeting, and it says that the town council was going to speak on the unlawful na nature of this article, um, to me, I felt that was we were informed. I mean, you know, you said we weren't informed at all. I think that we don't know the details of why, but I, um, you know, I feel that uh, I'm not surprised that that it's unlawful because I got this email, and so. Um, I don't know, Marie, you wanted to... Oh, I was just going to say, we'll deal with it if we got to deal with it. Um, I won't worry about it until it passes, and then we can ask for a written opinion from our attorney And f at that point in time, but I wouldn't worry about it right now. Yeah, I, I mean, I think if I, if I could just... It is, you know, it is going to be... Uh, in, it has the potential to be a, an intense town meeting. Mark, I don't disagree with that, but I, I think setting aside the controversial nature of the background behind the special town meeting, um, town council has, in the past, reviewed citizens' petitions in anticipation of providing legal guidance directly to the legislative branch, and I think in some ways has not kept the board out of it, but made it a thing for directly a town meeting because the board's position has been we don't want to even know if it's legal or not. It's up to you, but it's between you and town meeting. So I don't want to make it seem like Mike hasn't providing good service. He has been, he has handled this situation exactly the way he's handled most of them. I, to be honest with you, I'm surprised. I thought, to be honest with you, I had gotten something from him and, and forwarded it, documenting all this. I hadn't. I think that was probably an administrative oversight. But in terms of Mike reviewing, or, t or town, even was Dave Martell, town council reviewing citizens' petitions. We went through this on the gun control articles, as you may recall. They were citizens' petitions. Um, Mike Schneider reviewed that and then prepared an advisory that, the, that Rebecca, as moderator, read to town meeting. It wasn't really a thing that the board got involved in. And so I just, I, 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 I get it. He should have notified us anyway as a courtesy to us, and, and courtesy, to, not to me, as a courtesy to you. Um, again, but I think that was more of an oversight, not a intent to keep the board in the dark. I mean, to, one could argue although there are three articles on this warrant, that if it was the only warrant article, 
We're holding a town meeting that we don't need to hold in for, for any reason at all, if that was the only Warren article, not having heard that A, it's unlawful, and B, that we don't have to approve a, a town meeting for a citizen's petition that's deemed to be unlawful. I mean, that, that come, I, I've been doing this for nine years, and it's a total shock to me that we don't have to hold the town, call a town meeting We've done, given 200 yeah. signatures on a petition. Mm -hmm. if yeah. Has our the town board council, ever taken that approach? What? In your knowledge, has the board ever taken that approach? Yeah. No, I, I mean, I think I think even if we had a sense of that, or if the board had a sense of that, like we did for the for the articles, for the gun control articles. Oh, but those were in the annual town meeting. We were having that town meeting anyway. But the, but the but the precedent is the same. The precedent is the same. But we're of, spending thousands of dollars on a town meeting, a special town meeting here, Steve. I I understand, but I think that the the precedent has been. Hold the meeting anyway. Hold the meeting anyway. Give the citizens a chance to vote and let the chips fall where they may on the legality of it. And, and, and I'm okay with that, just to follow up, as long as somebody else is telling me what, where those chips are, chips fall. But what we're saying is there's nobody else to take. You know, we've already heard from all the people we're going to hear from. That's what Rebecca's telling us, which is our town council. We're not going to hear from an attorney general or somebody in the Commonwealth legal system to tell us, don't worry about it. Well, I think that depends on whether it passes or fails. Well, if it fails, we don't have to worry about it at all. It's more correct. Yeah, if it passes, right. yeah. I think I would like in the future, because this is starting to come up with issues that we've never really thought about, or I haven't, or dealt before, is maybe when we go to set the warrant for special meetings like this, we should probably ask for <coughs> legal opinion, because, like, I assumed if there was a controversy in the board, well, can you do a recall without a commission? And then we were told informally, yeah, we could do that. So. I, I think that maybe in the future, if this comes up again, and maybe another 10 <clears> or 20 years, we should probably look at the legality of the warrant articles before we set them. Mark? Rich, sorry. It, it seems, it, I don't want to add more mm -hmm. fuel to the flame, but it seemed to me it, in past years that we, Dave Martell did come into a meeting and talk about the warrant and talk about articles from, from, from the legal department. He actually, mm -hmm. he actually took a seat out there and and, and maybe that's what slipped. And this is a special meeting. It's a small one. But past, past practices that the attorney usually did approach the board and talk about the Warren articles, every one of them. But citizens' petitions, too? No, just the Warren articles. And he certainly, he certainly would have said, Article 2, citizens' mm -hmm. petition, I, I render it illegal. And we would have known at that point. You know, you, you forget, we get questions every day. Mm -hmm. I know we don't comment, we don't officially do it, but we still get questions on these articles on the one-on-one -on -one basis and and a lot of people have questioned the legality of article two which you know i thought was not legal but i didn't reference it to anything i just felt it was illegal for what was being asked to, to be done. <coughs> but we didn't have a legal opinion i even talked to you i guess four or five days ago Stephen, and asked if you'd heard about that if we had an opinion yet on that thing well, well, I mean, most times council does look at the warrant article before yeah. it comes back to you in a final form because De Debbie will always send it to him. I think this time, you also remember, you have a very condensed yeah. type of, 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 we, we of the holidays process we were, here yeah. that, that it maybe that kind of fell through the cracks. I mean, Article 3 came in 15 minutes before the warrant right. was closed. So, But, I mean, if yeah. we were going through the annual town meeting process, he would have a draft of that before you, got, before you folks actually yeah, voted on the final I, product. But I, I mean, would have pined. yeah, but, I mean, I think... The, the citizens' petition thing has always been an area where the board has taken a very hands-off approach. And I'm not proposing we do differently. I think the issue is. But more I, I think that that was, if there was a, um, if there was a reason why we didn't feel the pressing need to have council come to the board and explain it, is because we, we, I don't think I, even when we do the warrant, when we get to the citizens' petitions, it's usually. Those are citizens' petitions, and we kind of take a hands off. But if we're calling, a I guess in the future, Stephen, if we're calling, being asked to call a special town meeting, mm -hmm. it'd be nice to know whether we need to call that meeting or we'd be calling a meeting for something that's not considered legal. I, I, I have a question. If, so, Rebecca, you're saying that if our town council opinion is that it's illegal, we can remove it? I'm referring if to page I were the 13 of town I'd meeting. If I bring time. a lawyer that maybe had a different opinion. Okay, go ahead. What does that say? 
The warrant is usually issued by the selectmen and they insert articles either on their own motion or upon the written request of a specified minimum number of registered voters of the town filed before the selectmen close the warrant. The town officers have no authority to call a special meeting for an illegal purpose and no power to spend town funds for such a meeting even upon petition. They cannot be compelled to call such a meeting. And so that's where I derive my okay. understanding. Um, I verified with town council uh, tonight before I, I spoke to you to um, ask again, I want to make sure that the language that I'm using is correct, that you have opined that Article 2 would be unlawful given current statutes. And he said yes. That's fine. Okay. Uh, I, um, well, good. I had uh, indicated in the, the emails to you all that I would be seeking uh, uh, on Article 2 a, I would ask that town council share a, a more fuller description to town meeting of his opinion. I would request that the finance committee, select board and school committee issue a recommendation one way or another on this particular motion or the, the article. And so that that way the town voters can have an understanding from the boards who are uh, directly affected. The finance committee always makes recommendations uh, on financial matters. Um, but since this is a select board and school committee issue, I wanted to hear from your, recommend your recommendations uh, at town meeting. Our recommendations relative to what, though? Whether you approve or, or reject this uh, article. You rec yeah. What is your recommendation that town meeting do? Oh, We've right. never yeah. done that. <coughs> Absolutely, we've never done that. Yeah. 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 I when mean, it comes I, to citizens' petitions. I, I mean, that, yeah. other than if it's an illegal one, <laughs> we might I mean, want to. <laughs> I, Rebecca, I'm, and, and I'm not trying to be argumentative, but I'll throw this back at you. The question would be, as moderator, are you allowed to say I can't accept that motion because it's it's making a motion for an illegal issue? I rule on matters of order. I don't have the power to say I can't accept this particular article. Once it's on the warrant itself, then I deal with what's on the warrant. If the particular motion is beyond the scope of the article, then I have the authority to <coughs> move that particular motion out of order. Mm -hmm. I, mean, it's too, I, I really feel badly that we didn't know December 27th that, that this article was considered illegal because it probably wouldn't have found its way onto the warrant with Marie. Well, we traditionally do not comment on supporting or going against citizens' petitions, but if I, I would see nothing wrong with the select board saying we don't recommend this warrant article after we've received the legal opinion that it is, we could not enforce it. Uh, we could not uh, follow through with, what do you call it, implementing yeah. the based budget the opinion, switch. Based on the opinion of council, I think, yeah. uh, Mark, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I think that the board, based on past practice, would have still put it on the warrant because, it, you know, it is town council's opinion. As Bill noted, someone else can lawyer up and try and get a different opinion. And I think the board, just based on all other citizens' petitions that have been controversial, would have still put it forward on, on the warrant um, to let the voters decide. I mean, when, I think one of the things the board is good at is when, like the, the, the plastic bag ban. The board knew full, full well it wasn't a bylaw, but put it forward as written anyway and didn't say, well, we're we're not going to put this on the warrant because this really isn't going to be a bylaw. It isn't written as a bylaw. It, it, it was put on <coughs> anyway. So I, I just think, you know, I, I, Marie, I think how you just said that, though, is if, if the board was going to say something, I, I think now that you have counsel's, or you, now you, our counsel's opinion has been articulated, um, you know, that is, is one thing to look at. Mm -hmm. Mark, I just, um, um, I, having been on the, the other side, quite a few times, part of a community group that was dissatisfied with the situation. And um, I think it's very important that people in our community get to speak out on these issues and have their sort of day in court. Um, they may not f get like the $2 million that they're, they're looking for, but they can, you know, there are just situations where people really should have that opportunity to, to have their, their 
put their stuff out there because there could be some developments that come out of that discussion that could lead to something that would be legal or that would be viable um, in some way. Yeah. Town meeting is the legislature. It's not an open forum. Right. People can only speak on the topics that are under discussion on a properly uh, approved warrant. This particular warrant article re uh, would requ require funds to be um, put under the jurisdiction of the select board. Right. People can speak about the wisdom of that. People right. can speak about topics related to that. With regard to Article 3, if, if I could move into sure. discussion of Article 3, sure. I'd like to do that um, because mm -hmm. it speaks to the issue of what people can properly speak on. Mm -hmm. And please forgive me, I've got, I'm fighting a cold, so my throat is a little scratchy. With Article 3, on that article, it concerns whether to amend the charter with a Re an addition of a recall provision <coughs> of the Housing Authority School Committee Planning Board moderator, not the Select Board. It has specific provisions within it. Um, 200 or more registered voters, seven days of receipt of initial affidavit. Within 45 days, 15% of uh, the registered voters, thank you, um, including 50 registered voters from each precinct. So it has very specific details that the town can discuss whether or not we should add this recall provision to the charter. We can discuss um, why the particular board's chosen. Um, and that's it. We cannot discuss the use of a recall provision that we don't yet have in a particular case that people would like to or not like to use the uh, recall provision. We cannot discuss uh, character at town meeting. We can't discuss whether good or ill, whether somebody is wonderful or somebody is rotten. We cannot speculate on motives. And so while people um, may have a lot of things to say about a wide variety of topics. Mm -hmm. The range upon which they may speak at town meeting is narrow. And I will call to order anybody who strays beyond the scope of the article. And I want to make sure that that is absolutely clear. And I hope that I'll, I'll have your assistance in when you talk to people if they say, well, I want to say X, Y, and Z, consider twice. Uh, consider whether it's absolutely relevant to whether or not we should or should not have a recall provision added. Rebecca, Article 3 mm -hmm. and Article 1 mm -hmm. only say that if passed, the town clerk shall submit to the legislature a, mm -hmm. a, a, a home article, rule right. petition, essentially. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's all it says. There's no guarantee the legislature is going to pass this home rule petition. There's no guarantee, right. you know, there's no, so it's, it's shall we submit it. Yes. And shall we submit it, I guess, in this form. Yes. Yeah, but, but that's it. Right. Okay. I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that this, this, this does not put anything into the town charter. Right. And I, as I um, sent you a, a note, I just want to make it, uh, more widely known as well. Uh, since you were discussing the Charter Review Committee's work before, as I mentioned to you, should there be any questions about the Charter Review Committee, I would refer to you to answer those, uh, considering that the Charter Review Committee is no longer in existence and the um, committee did not look at recall provisions uh, in its discussions at all as per their minutes or reports. But just from time to time, we have uh, speakers, obviously, to describe things to the voters and, legis and the uh, legislative body. Should we have someone to, un to explain exactly what would happen if this home rule petition was passed and then what would be the next step? I mean, should we have someone from the legislature 
speak to that? I, mean, I have uh, informed no. our legislative delegation no. that uh, if they are able to attend town meeting, mm -hmm. uh, to kindly let me know so that should a question about that arise, yeah. I would turn to them first. Mm -hmm. And then if they are not able to come, then I would turn to the town clerk <coughs> mm -hmm. and ask her to speak about what her actions would be, right. uh, presumably, to file this with the legislature. Yeah. Um, okay. But, Thank you. I've anticipated that, yes. Good. Um, <clears throat> regarding Article 3 as well, we will have uh, a motion to fix the method of voting by ballot, as we did <coughs> for the last special town meeting. Uh, the procedure, the flow of voters will, will go a little bit differently. This time, the flow of voters will go, proceed up the side aisles toward the front, drop their um, ballots in the ballot boxes at the ends of the tables and the stubs at the center and proceed out toward the center aisle. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. We shall start with anybody who is in the overflow room, number one, <coughs> then number two, and then go from the, the bleachers to the floor in the uh, gymnasium. And so it should be a very orderly uh, procession as long as people remain seated and follow the directions. Um, and I think that is pretty much it. The, um, there will be no signs uh, permitted inside the high school, no literature permitted inside the high school, excuse me, permitted to be distributed. Um, people can stand outside the high school. Uh, there is no law that uh, defines a sp um, specific space from the entrance of the building at town elections or at, at elections there are there's 150 feet but at town meetings there is no such rule as long as people are not prohibiting others from entering the the <coughs> building that's fine um let's see Rebecca? yeah uh, the freestanding signs okay. are, are not allowed if you have like you can't just plug in yard signs along the driveway mm -hmm. if, if you want to be there and hold a sign you can do that. this is one thing we talked about yeah. um if you want to be there to hold a sign, you can do that. You can't just plunk one on the ground and walk away. Right. Is there anything else you want from us? Or anybody else have any other questions for our town moderator? Marie? I guess um, the moderator is asking, are you still asking for us to have an opinion? And do we have to vote on that, on what we're going to do? At what town they, meeting, I do plan to ask for uh, board recommendations. I'll be asking for the finance committee, for the uh, select board, and the school committee. So we might want to discuss and vote on how we're going to respond to that as a group. We've never discussed or voted on citizen petitions. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with Richard. We just vote as individual citizens. Mm -hmm. It's never been a board opinion. Should we have a board opinion on the one that we have a legal opinion saying it's illegal? <laughs> Number two. I think the board opinion is our town council speaks for the yeah. town. And that's. I, I could see that. When we hire him, it's his legal opinion, he speaks for the town. Yeah. You know, Bill, as you He's say. And if folks, if you don't like it, <laughs> if you don't like it, go get your other, go get another legal opinion. But our opinion is that. So when she asks you on. Um, Warrant Article 2, that's what you're going to say, and Ward Article 3, you're going to get up and say the select, select board. is taking no, no position on Article 3. I would say pursuant to custom. Yeah, past practice. Right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. okay. For Article 2, our, my only comment is going to be our town council has advised the town meeting, and the town council <coughs> works for the town, as we does the week. Which makes it unenforceable. <clears throat> and I don't know if the other I don't know if the other finance and, and everybody else if they they can comment any any way they want on it. But it's always been our policy right. not to comment on citizen petitions. Mm -hmm. right. No no debate in this room or, or any comment on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. You okay with that, Marie? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Rebecca, thank you. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. See you on the seventeenth. Thanks for all your organization. All right. <laughs> the last item of business is our next slide. Is our Dwight Road project percent captured in the diff? And Paul, I read this twice and I still don't 
thought it was clear. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, can you, can, in English. I will try to summarize it in, in English. Um, as a result of the district improvement financing that was established a couple of years ago at the annual town meeting, um, the select board actually needs to vote on the percentage of the incremental revenue that that project develops <coughs> in order to offset the bonded cost of, of, of the infrastructure improvements that, um, that were put together there. We borrowed $2.5 million um, in August of, of uh, 2018. Uh, for FY20, we are going to have a debt service payment of $183,000. Um, it is, I'm hoping, and it, it's more than likely going to hold, that we will have a value, an estimated value of that development for FY20 of at least $8 million. Mm -hmm. And if we have that $8 million valuation, it should be ample enough to cover the $183,000 of debt service. Mm -hmm. But just to be careful, I am asking that the select board, they, have, they, they, can, take a, they can take a percentage um, and only vote 90% of that incremental revenue, or, or in this particular case, I am recommending 100, so that there is ample revenue to cover that $183,000 in debt service. Now, there is still additional improvements that are going on in that project that probably will not come onto our records in FY, till FY21, in which case <coughs> you might only vote 80%, because only 80% of that incremental revenue will be needed in FY21 to cover what the debt service is. So again, for FY20 though, I'm making the recommendation that 100% of the percent capture be voted by this board. Um, the FY19 amounts, um, they, again, the select board actually voted 100% percent capture. Um, the budget was set at 97,400. The actual revenue came in slightly less. However, the actual debt service also came in slightly less than the actual revenue. So at the end of FY 2019, there will be a site fund balance in the diff fund of about $300. <clears throat> and that, would, that, would, that will carry forward um, at, at this point in time. So Paul, I just did a quick calculation, if I could mind, just did a quick calculation. So tax rate's 2409. Yeah. Got that, okay. So to cover the 183,625, Needs a property value of seven million six hundred twenty-two thousand four hundred fifty-seven dollars. There, that's what I. It's going to be slightly more than that because you have to remember you have to subtract the original um, valuation of the project. It was it was originally it had an original value of like three hundred thousand dollars. So that's not incremental revenue. Oh, 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 oh okay, okay. I, 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 okay, I hear you. So it's slightly more than that. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so so. So I guess the question is, we don't know what the value is going to be. So you're recommending 100% because that'll right. cover us right. if the value comes up at 7.8 or 7.9 million or something right. like that. Now, in speaking with the builder, building commissioner this morning, he had told me that the building was uh, probably 60% completed at this point in time, but we do not cap. We would not make that determination until June 30th of 2019. On, with regard to the value that we use for FY20. So there's still additional, even though we're 60%, and that probably gives us a, a valuation close to $7 million today, there's still you know five months worth of development that will go on that we would hope to hit that $8 million mark by June 30th of value. Okay, and, and what happens if, if there's extra money captured? If there is extra money, as, as again, as I said at the end of FY19, there's a, there's a whopping balance of about $300. At some point in time, I would say that there would be a vote to get that money out of the DIF fund and, and place it in, in, into the general fund. Or vice versa. Um, capture less the next year. Ca cap, capture less and utilize the okay. vote to use the fund balance in order to pay for the debt service that year. The answer to my question is from Tom. Oh, and, and our town assessor will do the property assessment. Is that yes, how yes, yeah. yes, it? Yes, 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 yes. That will be done internally. All right. And uh, so I, I guess I would support the, the 100% because I, I also think there are going to be some additional parts of that. I know uh, 
I mentioned the town manager, he wasn't quite sure if he should agree with me, but I know at the corner of Converse and Dwight, there's a big drop of like, it, it looks like close to five feet, but it could be less, so it has to be measured. And I think we might need to have to even put a retaining wall or something there. Um, so I would, that's why I'm thinking 100%, you know, just in case anything happens, happens huh? That's at the end of the day, I actually thought it pretty good, yeah. They did a higher, they did like a six inch granite. Yeah, I thought it looked pretty, they cleaned up nice, because I was looking for a much steeper yeah. drop. Yeah. I thought they graded it out nice, but. Okay. Yeah, they're right there. Yeah, and they'll, and they'll plant it. You walk out of your office and fall off. And I just think that'd be a great place for a walk on the long meadow side. But. <laughs> well, Paul, is there any pro possibility that this will come up short? There's a, yeah, there's always a possibility it could burn down tomorrow. You asked for a possibility, <laughs> I gave it to you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, it's the, brick, the, short, it's brick. Short, but our development agreement, <laughs> under our development agreement, the developer guarantees the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's right, yeah. Okay. That's right. Sorry. Anybody else have any questions for... So I would... For, yeah, I'll, or I'll forward a motion that we do the 100% on this uh, thing. I don't know if anyone wants to second that. Is the the following year of 80% voted now? or do we No, no. We, again, we'll make that determination, and we'll probably have a close to a final valuation in FY21, in, in which case so we'll do the math and... I'll make a recommendation. I also think in, in, in FY21, we probably have a surplus of about thirty or forty thousand dollars that we'd probably only use as an example eighty percent, and the extra twenty percent is going to remain within the general fund. And it's going to be forty to fifty thousand dollars, as I'm estimating at this time. I second the motion. Okay. So the motion's been made by Tom and seconded by Bill to uh, to move with a hundred percent capture of the. Diff revenue or the tax revenue for the diff at Dwight Road. Are there any other comments or questions? Okay, call for a vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? The vote is 5 0 and passes. Thank you, Paul. Tom, uh, Mark, can I yes. um, just one quick comment? It, just as a project update, I didn't I didn't have the information until today, but I'll put it, I didn't put it on my town manager report. We are looking at temporary signals at the intersection of Converse and Dwight where there are going to be permanent signals. Um, but I think we've uh, to let you guys, I think I sent you the emails about the mast arms being right. ordered. Um, we're working with our contractor on temporary signals for that location so the medical office building can open. Um, we would expect to have those, they won't be like the full deal like we have on the permanent signals, but we'll have something to control traffic <coughs> there, um, <coughs> hopefully by the end of January. Which has now got just stop signs and yeah. complaints. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Stop signs and complaints. Right. Which road are you talking about? <laughs> I've heard the complaints myself, so don't worry. I have a question on the follow up on that project. Where do they pay stormwater utility when they open? Sure. How is that going to be assessed? Sure. They do. They'll be paying. I imagine we're going to have to. There, if it's not done already, there is going to be a measurement of the impervious surface. Mm -hmm. And then we really go right into the calculation according to the bylaw. He has. I, I don't. I don't remember. I we, man. He, there's some mitigation there. Yeah. Right? He. He actually. I think his site plan had calls for 100% on-site management. Mm -hmm. So I think he'd have to look at an abatement. Uh, did we ever approve those abatements? Yeah. <coughs> so we did approve the abatements based on the BMPs. So he'll be able to come in for an abatement for mm -hmm. some of that. That's the. He's got this pretty, if you walk by, if you see it close, up on the corner mm -hmm. of Maple and Dwight, um, he's got a significant uh, retention pond, and you can see mm -hmm. down into the cement structures that funnel all the storm water. So he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's invested a lot of money in on-site storm water management. Mm -hmm. I give him credit for that. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Are there any other issues? We've got a next item on our agenda is the subcommittees, but Marie, go ahead. Uh, an issue is funny. Could we, I know it's a little early, could we have a, could you see about getting us the schedule for the budget meetings the next few months? Because I'm trying to plan out my March and April <laughs> so. The calendar went out back when we, in December, so if you look back, right. I did send out a... Well, I'm wondering if there's any updates <clears throat> to it. No, I'll get it, you something. Okay. As soon as we know, yeah, but I don't think we have anything updated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it has a window in there of like March 1st through the yeah. 17th, 18th, somewhere. Yeah, so there. if we could know what dates you're really looking at it. Yeah. Okay, we'll thanks. Budget, what budget? <laughs> All right, any other comments? 
Okay, our next, we will next meet at our town meeting, which is 10 days from now, the 17th, and our next select board meeting is in two weeks on January 24th. Mm -hmm. I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? See you on the 24th, mm -hmm. not before.